In this tutorial, I will show you how to perform global fitting with the dose response function. Dose response analysis is used to compare critical parameter values between different compounds, such as the EC50 or IC50 parameter. Origin provides built in dose response fitting functions, and in this tutorial, I will also show you how to compute EC50 or IC50 using what is called derived parameters. The data from a fictitious assay is substrate titration for an enzyme in the presence of a competitive inhibitor at different concentrations. Let's go ahead and create a scatter graph. Notice the legend is the same for all the curves. So what I'm going to do is change this. In fact, before I do that, I will make the y-axis title to be velocity, which was in the legend. And then we will pick up the information here for the legend graph update legend. And then let's use the long name and units. So that information was picked up from here and displayed in the legend. Let's go ahead and bring up the curve fitter. Analysis fitting nonlinear curve fit. We'll take a look at the growth sigmoidal category and let's look at the dose response function. Notice that the x values, substrate, in the dose response function are in logarithmic scale. So prior to fitting, actually I'm going to cancel this, we need to go back to the worksheet and transform the data. Right click and use set column values and then what we want to do is take the log of the substrate column Go back to our graph, which will update. We just need to rescale the axes. And then we can reopen the fitter using the menu or control Y, the keyboard shortcut. Again, we select our category and our function. The dose-response relationship measures the effect, response, caused by varying dose, substrate, where A1 and A2 are the lower and upper asymptote. We have four curves here, so we need to go to data selection and change our input, let's position this, change the input to add all plots in active layer. We can collapse the dialog. And now notice the fit curve for each. We have the four input ranges. Let's look at the parameters tab. And you'll see there are four sets of parameters. Now I want to share the A1 and A2 parameters. So what we need to do is instead of independent fits, we need to do a global fit. And that is set on data selection, multi-data fit mode, change that to global fit. Then when I go back to parameters, I can share, and as I do that, you'll notice that A1 and A2 will disappear from the other sets of parameters. So we share those two. We also want to fix their value from 0 to 100. I can then click the Fit button, Origin will paste the report table on the graph. It will also ask me if I want to switch to the report sheet. Let's go ahead and do that. This was created in the same book as the raw data. Since there are eight parameters, including the derived parameters, it's easier if I scroll down here, we can actually collapse this table and look at the summary table. This table organizes all the parameter values horizontally. So it can be used to compare critical results such as EC50 and EC80. 
The term half-maximal effective concentration, or EC50, refers to the concentration of a substrate, dose, which induces halfway between the minimum and maximum responses. The effective concentration or inhibitory concentration are critical values in dose response analysis. These values are not fitted parameters, so they are derived parameters, meaning they're computed after fitting. Origin has a quick help item. If I click on view quick help to open the quick help window and type in the word or the keyword EC50, this will bring up an item here showing you how to compute these values. With instructions on how to generate more derived parameters. Let's close this for now. And what we're going to do is go ahead and add EC90. So what I need to do, before I do anything, I can actually copy the value. I've copied the formula here, so I can just copy and paste to save myself some time. Okay. We're then going to open up the fitting function organizer. I select the function from the list on the left, and this is where I can edit the function itself. Scrolling down, I'm going to get to the derived parameters list, and this is where I can add EC90, so I'll paste that in. After doing that, I just want to click outside the box, and then I can save the function. And then we can close the dialog. If I go back here and I look at the results, I want to add that EC90 to my table. So what I do is I click on the lock, which allows me to change parameters. I click on the lock, which lets me select change parameters. The dialog reopens. And the only thing I need to do at this point is just hit fit, which will update my results and show me that EC90 value in the summary table. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching.